first thing to do is to launch the SDR Radio console by going to the sdrradio.com folder and selecting that icon. So now it's been launched. So now we'll go on with the setup tasks. The console has been relaunched. And we have to select the uh, output device. Here I'm selecting a uh, USB headset that I use. Also I have to select the input device and uh, that is an EMU 0202 and then we have to set up the sample rate for the output device which sometimes can be a little bit tricky Select the LO frequency, and actually we, uh, let's see, we already created that. If I'm not mistaken. And launching the uh, Lazy Dog control panel, setting the LO frequency to 15.015 megahertz again. selecting that frequency from the selection list. Now we're going to start the radio. And that doesn't look the way it should. I deliberately made a mistake in order to show you what not to do. The sample rate hasn't been set correctly on the sound card. Now you might think that you can just go down to the little speaker icon here and uh, select recording devices select the uh, one that we're actually using and go to the advanced tab where you can uh, select from a list of sample rates and we're going to use 192 kilohertz and hit OK and then start the radio and it'll work this time, right? No, nothing happens this time and that's because the EMU 0202, which is a very nice sound card, is a little bit quirky. You have to launch its application that comes with it from Creative Labs in order to set its sample rate. And sometimes it's a little difficult to get its application to appear. But there it is. And so you see it, what it was at the default startup value of 44.1 kilohertz. I just set it to 192 kilohertz. And now starting the radio should work. And there it is. And that's just the way it should look. Now we're going to tune in WWV at 15.015 megahertz. However, this is a beta version of SDR radio and the frequency display doesn't always come up right. Sometimes you have to restart the console. But apparently not this time because there is WWV right at 15.0 megahertz. I think I said 15.015 before. That was incorrect. Now, if you don't have everything adjusted right, there may be an image of it on the opposite side of the LO frequency. So we're 15 kilohertz below the LO frequency. The image would be 15 kilohertz above at 15.03 megahertz. And there it is. It's quite a few decibels down from the actual signal, but it's still audible and we don't want it to be. So we're going to
going to go to the Tools dialog and select the Soft Rock, and go to Image Rejection tab, and on that tab we can adjust the amplitude and the phase offset uh, to compensate for the fact that the gain in the two channels may not be quite equal. Notice how moving the slider back and forth brought the image way up. Now we're going to take it back down, and it can also compensate for the fact that the phase shift between the two LOs may not be exactly 90 degrees. So the idea is to find a nice, strong signal on one side of the LO, look for the image on the other side, the same number of kilohertz away, and then adjust these two sliders to null out the image. And you'll see that it's pretty effective in a moment here. There, the image is gone. So we're done with that. And there is the actual signal just as strong as ever. And now we're just about done with WWV. Um, so we're going to go to the 20 meter ham band and listen to a few things. We've stopped the radio and we're changing the LO frequency to 14.063 megahertz now. Uh, that frequency already exists in the selection list, but I'm going to show you how to put it there if it didn't already exist. Actually, I may have taken it out for this demonstration. And once you create a new frequency in the selection list, it doesn't show up there immediately. So you have to restart the console, and then it'll show up. select that new frequency and start the radio and there we are in the 20 meter CW band the antenna in use here is a uh, magnetic loop for a fairly there. I'm retuning the antenna, and there's a fairly strong PSK31 signal. about SDR radio is that it has a digital mode decoder built into it. And Simon is improving these things all the, all the time, so I'm going to show you here how to use this to decode PSK31 signals. You find the uh, stripe on the smaller waterfall in the lower left-hand corner, the signal that you want to decode, and you slide the filter pass band, or actually the decoded, the, de the demodulator, 
center frequency. Right on top of that, you can see that I'm, uh, well, I'm adjusting the filter pass bend, and now I'm moving the demodulator so that it's on the signal I want to demodulate, and um, as I do the narration, I'm watching this in a really low resolution display, so I can't actually read anything, but it looks like it is decoding the signal now. You have to select the signal in the waterfall display in the lower left hand uh, corner, as you see here, and then it will be decoded. I've tried that on both PSK31 and Morse, and it seems to work pretty well for both of them. This demonstration was recorded about 15 minutes to 6 local time here in Fort Wayne, which is uh, pretty close to sunset. And right now I'm, uh, I think I kicked in one of the noise reduction uh, features just to try it out. It sounded like the signal level dropped in my headset by quite a bit. Or no, I turned off the AGC. That's what I did. And I wasn't expecting the signal level to drop when I when I did that. So in a moment, I'll turn it back on. Okay, now let's try a little uh, more CW. CW is exactly the same way as for PSK31. You might want to use the CW filter, though. I haven't switched to it yet. And it really does work pretty well if you have the demodulator set right on the 